We Infuse Podcast, episode number 26. Welcome to the We Infuse Podcast. My name is Dylan McCabe, and in every single episode, we give you a behind-the-scenes look at the Infusion Center, both from a business owner perspective and just a team perspective, to help you understand tips, tactics, and a roadmap so that you can grow and scale a successful infusion practice. And I'm really excited about this episode because we have Matt and Cheyenne. These guys came in from outside. They were in the business world with CVS Health, both in different areas of expertise. And they got that entrepreneurial itch and wanted to start something on their own. And they did their due diligence. They looked at it from every angle. They decided to look in the Florida market and they made the move. They went from a stable situation with steady paying jobs to start something brand new from the ground up. And they engaged We Infuse from a consulting standpoint. So they were consulting clients of We Infuse and they also use We Infuse software. But these guys are just an amazing case study of what it takes to just move forward, burn your ships and go and start an infusion center in, in a very competitive market like Tampa, Florida. But these guys have done it and you can hear their story in this episode. So let's jump right into it. All right. As I said, we have a special, two special guests on today, uh, Cheyenne and Matt. They are the leaders of Sage Infusion in Florida. And guys, I would just really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for having us. We're excited. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, yeah, absolutely. And you guys have such an interesting story because a lot of our listeners are thinking about opening infusion centers. And you guys are just a great case study because you've done this. You came from the business world. You guys both have MBA degrees. You got into, um, you got kind of like hit cruising altitude in your careers and started looking at entrepreneurial endeavors. And you decided to open an infusion center. So I really, I'm excited to give our listeners a behind the scenes look at what that journey looked like. But before we dive into that, please share a little bit about yourselves and your background. And then um, I want to follow up with just kind of tell us a little bit about Sage Infusion. And then we'll get into the journey uh, of all that and how, how, how easy it's been to open and run an infusion center. Sounds great. I can start. Uh, so I'm an engineer by tra training. I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from McGill University in Montreal. And then I worked uh, in an engineering and manufacturing uh, company in, in, in operations and then business development for many years. Um, I wanted to switch out my uh, company and industry and business school is a good place to do that. So I uh, did my MBA from the Wharton School in Philadelphia. Um, and then I worked in management consulting for a couple of years, uh, which uh, helped expose me to the healthcare industry, uh, which uh, seemed like a very exciting and, and, and still is a very exciting space uh, in the country. And, and so I found an opportunity uh, to transition from consulting to the pharmacy innovation group uh, at CVS Health, where I worked for uh, six years before taking the plunge uh, with Matt to start our own venture. Hey, Dylan. Um, it's, it's good to connect with you again. Uh, we go, it's been, uh, it's been a little while since we've chatted, um, but uh, great to be on this show. Uh, definitely listened to it for um, a long time as we were uh, getting this thing underway. So uh, excited to be a guest here. Um, yeah, like Cheyenne, my background uh, has kind of been a little, a little all over the place. Um, but about ten years ago, um, I got started at CVS um, and uh, took a, di a few different roles there. Uh, but was in uh, both real estate and finance um, for the kind of the latter part of it, and really got to understand the financial aspects to. Uh, pharmacy and uh, the healthcare space. Uh, also got to meet Cheyenne there, um, and then uh, kind of the the rest is the rest is history at this point. Yeah, right. So, and you guys are all in. I mean, I remember when you were you engaged We Infuse for consulting, and I got to sit in on every single one of those calls and loved it. Just watching you guys go from ideation to a clear vision to realizing that vision to moving, you know, to Florida, all these things. It's just, it's just an awesome story and it's, just, it's a great case study. So, and we're going to get into Sage Infusion because you guys definitely have a thriving infusion center there in Florida. But 
let me ask you this. You guys both have business degrees. You're both really sharp guys. You're both in CVS, kind of in different areas at CVS Health. How did you come to the the conclusion that, you know what, we're going to open an infusion center? I mean, there's so many different avenues inside healthcare. What made you focus on the infusion center delivery channel? Uh, so the work that uh, – it's a great question, Dylan. The work uh, that uh, I was focused on at, at CVS, uh, it was around the delivery of uh, patient care. Uh, and that that's a area and space uh, that I developed a lot of expertise around, and I became very passionate about it um, in, in 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 my role at at CVS. However, what I did feel was there was always that hunger to do to start something on my own, and Matt and I had been talking for for years about and we had at that point not talked about doing something together just doing something on our own um and matt came across an opportunity which uh i will let him speak to as part of his uh as his work uh where you know he he talked about this space and we started looking at it together um, and then we went through the process that you, that you talked about. We, we developed a business case. We did our due diligence. We talked to all different types of st- stakeholders. Uh, we looked at getting sources of funding for our pilot location. Uh, we engaged uh, the We Infuse team, which has, which has been and continues to be a, a great experience. Um, and uh, we, we, we took the plunge. Yeah. Dylan, it really, it really kind of came to me almost um, through a personal experience. Um, you know, my wife and I were um, going through the, you know, the whole pregnancy, um, you know, life cycle that uh, you know some some people go through, um, and uh, through the course of that, she she had to get infusions and different things. Um, and I can just remember, uh, this is, you know, we were up in Boston at the time and, you know, driving into the hospital, trying to find parking, you know, in these big hospitals, you know, going through the, the gauntlet of um, processes that you have to go through at these, you know, big hospitals as far as check-ins and, um, you know, waiting in these waiting areas, not knowing when you're going to get called, Um you know, and then even when the infusions were happening, you're, you're, you know, at, you all, and I mean, it's like everybody comes with a caregiver, um, but yet like you go into these little kind of cornered off spaces and, you know, there's no seats for, for anybody. Um, and, and so it just like, as I'm going through this, I, I just was like, this is, this doesn't seem to be, um, uh, uh, the model that is best for these patients, you know, and my wife was having to go quite a bit. So it, it wasn't like this was, you know, just kind of one off, off things. So um, I think that's probably for me when the, the light bulb started to go off about what opportunities are there around this. And then of course, being at CVS and, and in the pharmacy space, you, you know, you, you're, you're pretty clued into, um, you know, the drug pipelines, where the, where the space is growing, those kind of things. Um, so, you know, it was, it was kind of just a combination of those things that started to, to put this together in my mind. Well, it's really neat because you, you guys both clearly had that entrepreneurial itch to do something on your own, to, to start, build and grow something. And then, you know, Matt, you, you, you speak to having that experience where you guys had to go for treatment and, you know, you start thinking to yourself, there's got to be a better way to do this. I mean, how many businesses or services have been started because of that? And you guys did that. You you jumped on it. And, and it's so cool. I, I can't stop thinking about how cool it is that we're talking because I remember when you guys first engaged, we infused for consulting and we started going through that process. And even in the, in the early, early part of that of doing due diligence, figuring out 
the the cost analysis, figuring about you know you know profitability, what kind of key team members you need to have on board, what your sales strategy is, and all that. And it's just it's just so cool to be talking now, and you know because we fast forwarded fast forward that whole timeline ahead by a year or so, and so. So you guys, you guys just started to go ahead and get into an infusion center. And then Matt, you know, you clearly have expertise in the real estate space that a lot of our listeners don't have. How big of a role did that play in you guys picking Florida to open your infusion center? Yeah. Um, I, I think from a real estate perspective, um, you know, that was after we had kind of settled on Florida. I mean, we, kind of looked um, at a macro level of where opportunity was um, for, uh, for, you know, standalone centers um, and, and settled in on, on Florida. Um, and I think once, once we kind of made that decision, I think that's where the real estate components started to get more um, kind of leveraged than, um, you know, because at that point we now knew kind of the market we wanted to start in, and then you really have to get into all the nitty gritty pieces of um, how to set up a lease, or you know where where are you looking for your location. Um, so thankfully, I had a a lot of background in that space. Um, so so I think that's when we really started to to be able to use utilize some of that. That's that's good. And then when you did decide on Florida and you started looking for a space, you know, a lot of people listening to this, I think you guys can speak to both aspects of it, growing it and streamlining it, but especially starting it. When people think about starting an infusion center, you know, what would you say was one of the biggest challenges just getting into it? What was the biggest challenge trying to solidify the idea or was the biggest challenge getting into it and growing it? What maybe maybe it was a challenge that you didn't see coming because uh, obviously you guys are running a successful practice, but it's it's good to talk about the struggles too. Because this is not an easy business to to start, uh, build, or grow. So let's speak to that. What's been one of the biggest challenges you guys have faced in this journey? Yeah, I can I can start off on that from my perspective. Um, it, you know, there, there's there's been multiple for sure. Um, you know, and you, you don't really know it until you're kind of stepping into it a lot of times. Um, but I think early on, uh, you know, there was certainly the challenge of, um, you know, getting funding and uh, kind of proving out to, um, you know, whether it's banks or investors, um, you know, even down to landlords that what you're doing um, has validity. Um you know, it is a new space within healthcare, um, relatively speaking, and you know, especially for for two non you know doctors clinicians to kind of say they want to start a, a healthcare company. Um, there, there is a lot of um, disbelief, and you know, you just got to kind of believe in what you're doing, and uh, you know get a lot of no's, but then, you know, we've, we were fortunate to find a few yeses in there that, um, you know, got us our site, got us our funding, got us our, uh, you know, physician that, that oversees our, our, our cl- clinicians. Um, so it, you know, th- those to me were some of the things that just, the, the big things that jump out as, as far as, uh, challenges that, that we faced. Cheyenne, anything you want to add to that? No, I, I think Matt co- covered the key elements of it. And for, for and so besides the items that Matt touched upon, I would say uh, for me, the process it takes to get in a network with commercial payers, uh, we had uh, obviously through feedback with stakeholders, including we Infuse, we heard that that takes a while. But when we finally got into it, it just I'm going through that process and the, you know, the the types of twists and turns and the time it takes that that that's definitely been uh, a a learning as well. And that's been um, also, uh, I would say, critical and us being able to uh, service patients who who need these medications. 
Okay, mm-hmm. so stepping away from that, coming in like you said as as business guys, you know, neither one of you are doctors, so so stepping away from that story of that that the, those challenging seasons early on, what's one key piece of advice that you would offer to our listeners who are thinking about going th- through this, through what you went through, or going through it now? So I can start, Matt, and feel free to add more. more. I, I would say, uh, from from my perspective, uh, and people have asked me about this, that you know, you're 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 leaving, you left your job, and you're starting this on your own. I think key key things uh, for 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 us, or at least from from my perspective, it's it's been very helpful to have uh, a, a strong. Uh, thought partner and, and so doing this with with somebody but doing this with Matt uh, as a as a uh, who who brings a, a, a good complementary skill set to to uh, starting this venture and not being doing this by myself so I never felt that I had to figure it out uh, alone uh, we, we would uh, always bounce things off, off each other uh, have hypotheses on approaching uh, the, the the plan and be data driven and then having stakeholders uh, engaging the right kind of stakeholders who would help inform validate or you know disprove the the hypotheses or or, or our plan from, from my perspective that that's been really key in taking this just from a discussion item to a live operating business. So now Matt gets to go and tell his wife that he was bragged about on a podcast about how great of an asset he is to the company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with saying 100. percent I mean, the um, you, you know you, you got to have a partner that you can. I mean, for me, I you know I know I have I have some things that I'm, I'm decent at, but there's definitely things that. You know, you get into operating things. Um, there's a, a list of things that I, you know, would would be way way over my head if if I had uh, you know done this. And you you got to have that commitment, and um, so yeah, I, I totally think that uh, I'm on the same page with Cheyenne as, as that that partnership um, is is really key. It's been huge for us. Well, it's 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 good that you speak to that because so many people hear about teamwork or the you know you read leadership books by people like John Maxwell and he talks about the different laws of leadership or laws of teamwork and you hear about having a winning team around you and surrounding yourself with people that are smarter than yourself. But a lot of us learn that either through really positive experiences or really negative experiences, and and you guys just prove it again that. You know, having an idea and and uh, jumping into this journey is one thing, but making sure that you surround yourselves with key people that you can work with long term is so critical. And then you guys, uh, like you mentioned, Cheyenne, people saying, you know, you're going to quit, you're going to leave stability and go into instability. But you guys are thinking like entrepreneurs. I mean, people that are not thinking that way only see obstacles, but op- entrepreneurs see opportunities. And but but it doesn't you know, I know you guys well enough to know that you did an incredible amount of due diligence and you were very analytical in this process. And so that I think, you know, being a guy that's looking on the outside, looking in at what you did, I know that that gives you confidence when you really look at the situation from as many angles as possible. And then you can move forward with confidence knowing, hey, we've looked at the upside. We've looked at the downside. We've looked at the opportunities, the risks. We've analyzed this every way possible. Now it's time to move forward. And, and you guys did that. So, well, let's, let's switch gears here and move into what you have now. Tell us a little bit about Sage Infusion, you know, what kind of operation you have, where you're located, what kind of team you built, what kind of patients you're seeing and all that. Just tell us, tell us about Sage Infusion today. Sure. Um, we, we are in, um, in, in central Tampa, uh, very closely uh, located to one of the major hospitals, St. Joseph's Hospital. And so that thanks to Matt and his uh, real estate eye, uh, we, we found a really uh, good, good location. In fact, many uh, patients uh, uh, come and, uh, uh, you, know, you, you know, they're in different parts of Tampa. And they're able to get to us within 15 to 20 minutes at, at most, uh, which, which is a key part. We are focused... Um, solely on patients with autoimmune diseases. So we don't do any 
oncology patients. Uh, folks have that choice when they're thinking about opening up an infusion center. Uh, uh, but we, we, we decided to focus on patients with autoimmune diseases such as uh, MS, RA, Crohn's, UC, osteoporosis, and, and asthma. Um, and uh, we also do not uh, service any infectious disease patients, so no, no antibiotics. And so now if you think about the current context, right, you have the COVID-19 pandemic and... Um, you know, our patients, uh, we, we, we are open. We're kind of, we, we incorporated all the necessary uh, screening protocols recommended by the CDC. And, we, we, you know, everybody's wearing masks. We're taking temperatures. We're limiting the number of people. We're staggering the, the appointments and uh, all of that. But our patients are so, we, and we hear this from them uh, often, that it's so, they're so grateful that we're open because this is the kind of setting they're already immune compromised. This is where they want to be. They do not want to go to a hospital, and especially with, with this situation. And our um, site of service is, is geared around the patient's uh, comfort and convenience. We're open extended hours and we're open on weekends and even Sundays by appointment. And we're able to accommodate uh, the, their needs, whether they... Uh, and with COVID-19, obviously, we're keeping... Them, them separate, but our, our normal setup uh, includes a, a patient uh, lounge uh, as well as uh, s- semi-private rooms. Matt, anything to add from your perspective? Um, I would say that uh, you know the only thing I would I would kind of add to that is we've we've got a great team. Um, you, you know, there's a lot of. Um, all, the, all the people that are still working with us are people that uh, started with us um, on the you know on the office side that you know had the same kind of spirit of, uh, of pioneering this and you know quickly pivoting as as things worked and didn't work um, so that that's been great to to have um, consistency there that's that's been a a, a nice um, a nice asset for us. Um, you know, and the other thing that we've, uh, done as well is, you know, we're, we're independent. Um, so we, uh, don't, um, have any physician that, um, is, um, you know, part that's referring to us as part of the ownership structure or anything like that. And, um, that, you know, that's something you have to make a decision on, um, because there's, there's pros and cons on both sides of it. Um, but I think us taking that, that approach and, and doubling down on it has been uh, to our success so far. Um, and we'll kind of see as the market continues to, to evolve. Um, but that's uh, another aspect of our business that we um, continue to maintain is, is that independence from, uh, from a referring physician. Okay, so let's think about that for a minute and and talk a little bit more about that. You guys came into the Florida market, which is a huge market. You have a beautiful facility and you've got a a great team there. I looked over your website and you've got a great website too and you look very accommodating and you're uh, you're doing all these things from, you know, opening in the evenings and weekends and providing separate rooms and stuff like that. I mean, you're doing pretty much everything you can, but we all know that this is not the field of dreams. If we build it, they will come. Uh, and we talked about that as well, you know, many months ago, talking about sales strategy. So just kind of, if you would, give our listeners some of the ways that you've been successful at getting sales, getting referrals, and how you've kind of navigated a competitive, a competitive area like Tampa. That's a great question. Um, uh, when we started... Obviously, we, we were new um, and we had to prove ourselves. Uh, so as part of our sales strategy, we would we were reaching out to uh, the targeted specialists. And w- what we asked was to, to to give us one patient so, so that we can uh, everything we, we, we are saying at, at that point is a promise. And we, we wanted to demonstrate uh, that we can deliver on, on the promise. Um, and it, it, it definitely took some time and it took uh, 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 a lot of effort uh, 
but by being able to once a, a, a physician sent us a patient, sometimes we would get a patient because another place has not provided a quality service. And so the physician was looking for an alternate side of service. And that is our opportunity. We want to demonstrate to the patient as well as to the referring specialist that whether it's clinical excellence, uh, whether it's the comfort and convenience of the patient, uh, we, we will handle everything from benefits and investigations to the authorizations to uh, pr providing a, a high quality ser service, sending treatment notes back uh, we, uh, through uh, now, hopefully we can do that through we infuse um, and, and f s providing our service around the uh, patient's schedule. Uh, and, and so having a, a, a repeatable process around focused on these uh, processes focused on these elements, um, we've been able to demonstrate to our, our physician partners that once they send us a referral, we will we keep them in the loop uh, that you know when the, we receive the referral, We've, uh, when the patient has been scheduled for their first appointment, on receiving ongoing treatment notes, uh, if there are any labs missing, we'll follow up uh, for depending on the medication. And then the patients, uh, we're also, oh, uh, uh, when, when they're coming in and then they're checking out, uh, and the feedback we've been receiving has been, has been tr tr tremendous uh, and and we, we've and we know that our patients are also going back and talking to their doctors uh, about us, and um, we, we've heard positive feedback from uh, our physician partners as well on this. Well, it's so good. I mean, you guys clearly that's where your heart is is the patient experience and making sure they get quality care. But 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 in addition to that, I think something you guys have done really well, and it's something we talked about early on as well is is your sales strategy and, and also just making sure that when people find you online, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at your website right now and the user experience on your site is a very clean. It's very simple. It's very helpful, whether you're a patient or, or a referring provider and you even have a tab, a menu there for payers. And then you have a team of eight people that you show and everybody has a picture. It looks warm. You've got a, you know, I love that you guys have a great quote and then kind of a bio on each person. I think you've made it real easy as far as online, you know, your online presence goes to go your business. The reason I speak to that is because now, you know, at the time of the recording of this podcast with the COVID-19 crisis, a lot of places have had to halt their sales strategies to everything's online. You know, it's, it's digital door knocking at this point. And if you don't have a really good online presence, you, you're, you're going to be hindered from, from progressing your practice at a time like this. And um, obviously everybody's dealing with, with the different challenges that come with that. But I just, I think you guys have done such a great job at that. And so getting to where you are now, going from the vision to making that vision a reality to now you've got uh, several months under your belts as, as being infusion center operators, what's kind of key piece of advice that you would share to anybody from what you've learned getting to where you are now? Yeah, I think for, uh, you know, Shannon and I were, we, we, you know, we meet, you know, constantly during the week as we're kind of, um, you know, always, um, you know, looking at what's working, what's not working and, and um, trying to, to make sense of everything that's happening around the world uh, right now. Um, but for us, I would say that you know, as we, at least, especially for me, as I stepped into this, um, you know, as a numbers guy, um, you know, I definitely didn't appreciate, um, as much how, uh, the, the level of clinical care that, that goes into this and into these centers. Um, and I think that's been something that, has really opened my eyes as far as like, you know, look, these, these things are, are really providing a service that to patients that are in absolute critical, um, need of it. And, you know, you got to put that patient first, 
you've got to create a center that um, accommodates them well, accommodates their 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 caregivers well. Um, and if you do those things, um, you know, the the rest should, you know, start to take care of itself. And I think we, we focused on that and it's, um, it's so far worked out for us. Um, and hopefully we can continue to, to kind of put that patient first, um, and, and see the, the fruits of that as we, as we continue to operate. That's so good. And I like how you guys share just part of your strategies as far as picking your space, your sales, and your operations. And of course, shameless plug, you guys use We Infuse to, to manage the workflow of the practice and make sure that you have a, a streamlined process there. I'll, I'll make more of a plug after we, uh, in, the, in the outro of the podcast. <laughs> but, but you guys are just such a great case study. I keep saying that. And, you, you know, for anybody listening to this, I just love how um, Cheyenne and Matt came in as business guys from the outside looking in. You evaluated everything. You aligned yourself with the right people. And now people can go to your website and see. And I'll put the URL to the website in the show notes. But people can check out your website. They can see what you've built. They can see the team you've surrounded yourselves with. And you are you are not in a market that's just wide open. You, you are definitely in a competitive area. But you guys are clearly offering a level of service and a facility, I think, that's a cut above the rest. And you are getting referring, uh, you're getting physicians to refer patients to you. And, and it's one of the things that we used to hear a lot, or I used to hear a lot when I was fielding uh, consulting calls is why would a physician refer their patients to my infusion center? And there's so many ways. And you just spoke to even one that the, the physician wanted the patient to have a better experience. Maybe the patient complained to the physician or, or who knows what, but they got a better experience at your place. So. Um, guys, this has been a great interview. I know there's a lot more we could talk about, but is there any, uh, any parting piece of advice for current infusion center operators before we end this interview? Um, I, I would say always, as, as Matt mentioned in his parting advice, always put the patient first. Uh, our, our goal has always been, do they, these patients have a lot going on in their uh, lives? They're, they're usually comorbidities. There are other things. They're just trying to manage their condition. And the, whatever we can do to take the friction out of uh, their ability to stay on their medications, to c- c- receive their treatment and stay healthy, uh, everything else will follow. That's so good. Matt, anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say the only last thing I would say is to really, um, you know, know what your um competitive strengths are. And I think for Shane and I, we've come in into a space that has a lot of opportunity to innovate, uh, to bring different um, uh, non-clinical, you know, the, the infusion space has been done through hospitals and provider offices for a long time. Um, and there's been a lot of good things that have come of that, but there's a lot of opportunity to do things better. Um, and so we, we try to kind of balance that with our approach. Um, and I think that there's continually uh, opportunity to do that um, with more and more uh, business people getting involved and uh, looking to try to make that experience better than um, what it's been. And, and hopefully we'll continue to do that into the future. That's so good. Keep the patient first and focus on your strengths and your your competitive edge. Uh, Matt and Cheyenne, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Yes. Thanks, Dylan. All right. Some great key takeaways there. I love how they really focus on keeping the patient first, but on the other side of it, these guys have business acumen that is top notch. They are both very intellectual when it comes to thinking things through, from a business standpoint and also just the marketing aspect of it, their sales approach. We had a lot of discussions about sales strategy that we talked about when they were engaging We Infuse for consulting and they have done it. They have put legs to every single idea that's been solidified. And again, they're just such a great case study. So if any of you listening to this podcast want to learn more about Matt and Cheyenne, you can definitely check out the show notes. You can look at their website for Sage Infusion in Tampa, Florida, and you can reach both of them on LinkedIn as well. And of course, if you have any 
many questions and you're thinking, you know, we've been kicking this idea around and we want to talk seriously about starting an infusion center, you can contact the team at We Infuse and do a discovery call and learn about our consulting process and why we do or do not take certain clients for consulting engagements. And you can also talk about the software as well. If you currently run an infusion practice and you want to learn about how to simplify and streamline the entire process and go from using a constellation of systems and paper and different things flying all over the place to one software system tailor designed for infusion centers, contact We Infuse today. You can talk with one of our account executives and you can do a discovery call and learn about how We Infuse can make your life a lot easier, which in the end results in better patient care. And that's the vision and goal of every um, successful infusion practice anyway. All right, guys, thank you for joining us. This is Dylan McCabe with another episode of the We Infuse podcast, and I will catch you in the next episode.